<laughs> and we are live once again. Yeah, Uncle Bocow and Melden. You know what time it is? It's lunch time. Some people already took lunch. What time is it? Eh, whatever, man. I take lunch between one and two o'clock. So what we got here is Ari's. Let me give this a nice shaky shake. Ari's twisted sauce, twisted Caribbean. Twisted Caribbean. Out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Ingredients, tomato, tomato sauce, sugar, and Caribbean spices. Very simple sauce. So, let's uh we're gonna do a solo bite and then we're gonna throw it on some food and see what it what it what it does. Oh yeah, nice thick sauce. Mm. Wow. Sweet, tangy, right off the bat. And then you get the Caribbean spices. Mm, excellent job. You guys are out of Greensboro, North Carolina. What I have here is just a just a little barbecue plate. Never hurt nobody. So let me throw some of this barbecue on this. Uh, let me throw some of this barbecue on this bun. And slather that sauce on it and let you guys know how it tastes on some barbecue. You guys know I don't eat barbecue that often. So like one video of me reviewing another sauce with barbecue. Um, so how are we gonna do this? Don't wanna don't wanna make a mess. I think we'll put a little bit yeah, on the sandwich and then we'll kind of do the uh, this the ordeal where we put a little more on the the side like that so we get a nice bite of it so Ari's Twisted Caribbean let's go oh yeah oh yeah straight money right there folks mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. let's try it on a hush puppy why not what's it gonna hurt you know Hush puppy. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You guys know I am a, a Yankee, so I'm not a big hush puppy guy. But these are from Smithfields, and um, they're pretty darn good. Their coleslaw is good. They have a little shoestring french fries. And they're not nasty GMO chemical stuff like McDonald's. But it's actually hard to get your hands on shoestring french fries. I mean, once you go Burger King, McDonald's, them things are garbage. I know, I know. They do taste good and they smell good when they're frying. <clears throat> they got so much chemicals in them and garbage. Very bad for you. So, now we're going to try some more sauce. All right, and then a slaw bite. This is real, true Southerner food. I just dropped half the slaw, but oh lord, that's good! Mm, mm, mm. Wow, that's money right there. I bought. I've had this sauce for a while, and I've been meaning to review it, but I wanted to wait till I um I wanted to wait until I had the right food to try it on. But I did some of their other sauces, just solo bites. All right, so I'm gonna try a little Ari's in a little hot sauce. Woo -hoo -hoo. Mm. It's money right there. I'm going to pour some in the corner of this tray. And believe it or not, we'll dip some french fries in it. Hmm. <laughs> 
It's even good on French fries. So uh, let me see if I can get you guys a website off of the bottle. Let me get my specs on. All right, so Ari's, A-R-Y-S, Twisted Grill and Sauces.com. Ari's Twisted Grill and Sauces. It's A-N-D, Sauces.com. If you guys want to get some of this, it's not spicy, it's not hot. They do have another sauce that's got ghost pepper in it. Um, and they have their original, then they have their kind of all-purpose. I think that's the one with the ghost peppers. Then they have this. They might have some new sauces. We got to check and find out. But, uh, yeah, so how's everybody doing out there today? I was wait. You know what? I was waiting in line. And uh, for this, they had a big line today. We'll go, go back with the – this is a double. Look at that. It's two hush puppies stuck together. But it's got the perfect – it's a perfect vehicle for sauce. Look at that. Oh, man. I love that stuff. It's so good. Uh, I'm waiting in line at Smithfields. I didn't bring lunch today. I don't usually eat out. I don't eat fast food. Um do not definitely do not eat a lot of pork but every once in a while you know this is the closest place to my work so yeah um but i'm waiting in line i got on youtube and seen ed curry was live i went on there and said hello and two minutes later they're like uncle bokal you just want a a hot sauce holster imagine that i have a Hot sauce holster. So yeah, I've been kind of wanting one of them for a while. I just never, uh, never ordered one or thought about it. So thank you, Pucker Butt. I'll uh, that'll come in handy. Trust me, it will come in handy, especially when we go to festivals, you know, stuff like that. Go out and about. Have my little hot, hot sauce holster on me. And I always wear a belt, so guess what? That thing, I'll keep that thing on me at all times because I bring my hot sauces to restaurants because, tell me why in the comments. Why would I bring my own hot sauce to restaurants? I think we all know the answer to that. And the answer is because most restaurants' hot sauces are garbage. Now, I will say this. I was at this place in Oklahoma City. <clears throat> it's called something bear diner restaurant or something. It's got the word bear in it. And it's like kind of like woodsy and log cabin-ish on the inside. <clears throat> um, and let me tell you something, man. It was right next to the hotel we were staying in. Bro, that's where I ate the whole time I was out there. I think I was out there for five days. Man, I got breakfast from there, lunch, dinner. But, man, they got this, like, breakfast plate. But, anyways, the whole point of my story, I'll tell you about the breakfast plate in a second. The whole point of this is that when we just talked about hot sauces, how restaurants have crack ones, this place actually had a bunch of different hot sauces on, on each table. When you sat down, you got to choose from – four or five maybe more but there was at least four or five um different types of hot sauce that you could put on your food and every one of them was straight money straight money if i didn't fly out there i would have bought a bunch of bottles and brought it home but i was i was flying and packing light and you know i don't want to put glass bottles and going through uh tsa with that you know how that goes. This stuff gets broken. All your clothes got glass and sauce on them. So, yeah, Ari's Twisted Caribbean. I'm putting a dent in this. This stuff's money right there. <clears throat> Let me get uh, – I had a spoon there, but I think I need a fork to get some of this barbecue. I'm going to actually, actually dump this on – dump it on this rest of this barbecue and fries. <laughs> <clears throat> and take a mixture bite, you know, kind of like I'm from New York, the home of the garbage plate. Okay, we eat like this. 
Mm. Mm. There's many different types of garbage plates in New York. So it's, it's a diner thing. Most of the time, drunk people that leave the bar or club at four in the morning get it. I mean, other people get it all the time, but that's uh, one of the specialties. <clears throat> but you can get like, they have like, I don't know, some people get breakfast stuff. And maybe you'll, there'll be a sausage patty plus a hamburger plus some baked beans, baked potato salad, and, and over easy eggs, um, macaroni salad. Check this out with brown gravy on top of it. I know what you're thinking. Unless you're from upstate New York, you're thinking that's disgusting. Well, guess what? You have to try it. My wife tried it. She liked it. Other friends that I've made it for down here in the South loved it. First time I ever seen it, I was with a friend of mine at a little hot dog spot in New York. Um, they had the best hot dogs with the meat sauce and the onions and mustard. Or Southerners call meat sauce chili. Uh, but he got a hot dog and then he's like, and give me a mac and gravy. And I'm like, what? Mac and gravy? What the heck is that? He's like, oh, you got to try it. And I was like, no, bro. And I seen it. It came with macaroni salad, a little hot dog spot with brown gravy on top of it. I was like, hell no. He goes, man, just try a bite. I'm like, all right. So I tried a bite and I was like, holy cow. That's delicious. <laughs> so I've eaten it ever since. Yeah. Mac and gravy is uh, is awesome. That's one of the things that comes on a garbage plate. You can get the garbage plate, by the way, you can get whatever you want. Um, most places let you choose. But, yeah. So, anyways, that diner out there in Oklahoma City, it had their own hot sauces on each table, a whole bunch of different flavors. I know one of them was habanero, but anyways, whatever the case may be, they were good. Besides that, if I go out to eat somewhere, the hot sauces that they have available are, are trash. I mean, or just regular everyday stuff. Down here in the South, Texas Pete or Tabasco, up north, Frank's Red Hot or Tabasco. You know, so I'm going to be using that hot sauce holster. <laughs> I don't go out to eat much, though. I mean, I was a chef for 20 years, so most food at most restaurants doesn't impress me. They don't get me wrong. There is some stuff that definitely impresses me. But I've been in the South for 10 years or 11 years, and I can't find good Italian food, um, can't find good Chinese food, can't find good pizza, can find good tacos. There's a lot of little, little Mexican mom spots that have, I mean, I'm talking about slamming uh, real Mexican tacos. So that's, that's one thing you find here that you don't find in New York is a taco spot. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't have more of them up north, but they don't. So, yeah, down here, it's, it's hard to find good food. I mean, if you want fried chicken or a barbecue sandwich, yeah. You can find that on any corner in the South. <laughs> but as far as like, Italian food, no. I mean, there might be some places I just haven't found yet. But I found some Arctic pizza uh, when I lived on Top Sail Island. And there's one place in Salisbury, North Carolina. We're raging Cajun. What's up, brother? How you doing? So you like Louisiana, 
habanero sauce. All right, I don't think I've had that one. <clears throat> Go to New Orleans. Oh, God, I know that already. Actually, uh, <clears throat> I became friends with a guy from New Orleans many, many years ago. And uh, he opened up a little cafe, Cajun cafe. His parents actually owned a, a coffee company way back in like the 50s and 60s, Mellow Joy Coffee. And he kind of opened that back up and named his cafe Mellow Joy Cafe, had his own coffee and stuff. Um, he was friends with like Emeril Lagasse. This guy was, he was top notch. Andre was his name, man. He was a good cook. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. He taught me a lot back then. I was 20, I think I was 21, 22 years old. So I had cooking experience, but uh, not, not extensive. I started cooking when I was like 14. Um, I'd cook at home, experiment with stuff. I used to watch some guy on TV. I think the show was called Walk, W-O-K. He was an Asian guy. And he'd wear these shirts that say, Walk This Way, and The Walk of Life, and all this. And he was funny as heck. And um, I remember watching him when I was like 14 years old. This was before the internet, before the Food Network. I mean, you're talking about 1987. So, watched him a little bit. and Couldn't get the ingredients, though. Back then in upstate New York, you couldn't get the right ingredients to make a lot of stuff he was making. You had to be in a bigger city. Uh, but I started experimenting when I was 14, 15. Um, at age 18, I actually met a guy. Well, I didn't meet him. I knew him. But uh, I knew his brother, should I say. Met him. He had an ex a restaurant. Uh, Eric Cadle. Yeah, so and I don't know how to get in touch with him, man, but Eric Cato, he opened a little spot. He, he named it Habaneros, um, and he did Cajun food, Mexican food. Man, he did anything spicy. He he made his own hot sauces, um, and I learned a lot from him, too. But, man, he used to make, like, a, a blackened chicken sandwich with black bean salsa on fried bread. Oh, man, he made a, a, a spicy veggie, white veggie lasagna. Um, that I still make that sometimes. Um, and he made burritos. I mean, I'm talking big, huge burritos. He did his own refried beans, you know, he, he all from scratch. Everything was from scratch. And, uh, yeah, man, used to go there. I was like 18 years old and, you know, have a buck or a dollar or two on me, I'd get a huge burrito and just be so full. And, um, and I loved it. So yeah. And then he, I learned a lot from him. And got a little bit better experimenting. By the time I was 21, 22, started working in restaurants. I worked a little bit here and there, pizzerias and stuff when I was still a teenager. But um, about age 22 is when I really started cooking in restaurants, started cooking a lot more stuff at home. And then just over the years, just kept on going and going and going. And I did that until I was uh, 42. So 20 years, I was a cook and a chef, and um, you get tired of it. You get burned out, but I still like to cook. I still can cook, and um, that's why I make you know the, the good hot sauces that I make. I, I don't mean it to be prideful, but I made hot sauces different ways over the years. I'm a sauce guy. I want sauce on everything. I can't stand a dry salad even. When I order salad, I get extra salad dressing. When I order a certain stuff, I, I say I want extra sauce. That's just how I am. I think that's what makes it. You know, I know how to make all the Blancs and the French sauces and stuff like that. And, you know, Bernays sauce, whatever. Um, but, I'm, yeah, I'm, a, I'm just a sauce chef, man. That's just one of my specialties. And I've just, I've just came up with so many sauces over the years because you get a, you know, special Run in when I worked down on Topsail Island, we um we had a great great team down there, and uh, my buddy Chris he'd go to the fish market right there on the beach, man, right there, right fresh off the docks, wahoo, mahi mahi, you know, big eyed tuna, all kinds of stuff. Whatever came in fresh, he was grabbing it. Two three in the afternoon, the boat come in, bam, he grab it, <clears throat> come to the restaurant, and we had to come up with five dinner specials on the spot. <clears throat> 
let's do this. We got two hours before dinner starts. So we do our prep, whatever else we need to do, and we come up with sauces. And uh, yeah, yeah, and just you just pull something out of your head. So that's how that's how I started getting into hot sauces this year. I, I've been making hot sauce for myself and my wife, but I, uh, you know, I started put, giving some away this year. And uh, we're not we haven't put it on the market yet. Nothing's nothing's available to the public yet. But we're looking at uh, going public in 2022. Hopefully, there's a lot of red tape involved. So next year, I will be selling some peppers. Um, I have two people that are growing for me. And I also have my personal peppers and the people that are growing for me. Um, I'll be using those peppers for my sauces, for my dried stuff, tincture, whatever else I feel like making those peppers. My personal peppers that I grow and I care for, I baby, I'm going to part with maybe a pound a week um, or a couple of small flat rate boxes. Nothing big, nothing big. But I've got some really cool seeds. Um, a hundred varieties, probably going to grow with me and my growing partner is about 75 varieties, but I will have at least, you know, 30 to 50 varieties of my own stuff. So anybody want pods, um, and I'm going to try not to sell them all to one person, man. I'm, I'm going to give a lot away, but I will be willing to part with a little bit this year. None. I was a, 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 a greedy man when it came to pods. I was buying them from everybody. I grew a little bit of my own. I grew in partners. And I got about 50 pounds in the freezer. I didn't want to run out. And, yeah, I got fresh pods at home, dried pods. I mean, my wife eats a ton of them. Um, you know I mean? I carry them around with me. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. So, yeah, that's it. Hey, Tammy, what's up? Tammy, do you know what this is? That is one bite of a scorpion that you grew that completely wrecked me this morning. And I'm talking bad. I ain't never, ever had scorpion pepper that hot. Never. Never. That's the hottest one. That thing put me in my place early in the morning. <sighs> Let me see what, hold on, I'm going to put my glasses on, Greg, because it's hard for me to see. Oh, don't buy land in Louisiana, too many hurricanes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that's, uh, you know, we were lucky this year here, and I didn't grow a lot because I was kind of, came in late to the game. Um and so, but next year I've got everything set up. I've got the grow lights and the heat mat, seed mats, and oh, I got it. I got it going on to start my own stuff. Um, I bought seedlings last year and didn't have much of a variety. But let me tell you, we had a good season here. I mean, phenomenal season here. We thought it was over. Like, you know, we thought by October, middle of October, everything would be done and stuff. And no, I went out to my boys, Colfax Pepper Patch. It's one of my partners right there. It's my main guy. I get most of my peppers from. Uh, we're doing big things together this year, growing some stuff together, and uh, you, you, we'll update you on that. But I go out there. It was October 31st. Still pods galore growing. So, and uh, we didn't get any heavy rains that you know that would knock flowers off of the plants. <clears throat> we did not get any. Um, uh, there's no hurricanes or anything like that, and. The summer was, you know, I mean, North Carolina summer is hot, but it was, it was milder than some years. So, I mean, it was, man, it was, it was crazy this, this season and we, and it lasted so long before we got our first freeze, our first frost, um, our first frost. I don't remember, but it was maybe the second week of November or the first week might've been the first week of November, but you know, that was it. And then it got nice out again. So. Yeah, some people could have even covered their plants and, and, and let them keep going. That's how nice it got afterwards. So hopefully we get a season like that again. The chances of getting two seasons back-to-back -back like that, it's about a 50-50 chance. So we're hoping that this year is just as good. Um, 
I am definitely hoping it is because, man, I can't wait to share my peppers with people. Um, I've got some exclusive stuff. We, we actually got some a couple accidental crosses that we don't know what they are, but we know they're killer. Like we got one, we're, we might call it Panic Red. I got to talk to Chase and see if we can come up with a name that we both agree on. We don't know what the cross was. All we know is it's one of the hottest peppers I've ever eaten. And we are going to grow it this year. I say the seeds and, you know, it's just going to be some random pepper we're going to throw in mixed boxes or make sauce with. Uh, Pete's Passion is another one exclusively from Cold Pack Pepper Packs getting released this year. <clears throat> um, and we got some other stuff. We got some other stuff that's just came out or it's not really popularized yet. I, uh, I got seeds from Jimmy Pickles. They're the, the purple orange uh, reaper, golden pre metalli, like all kinds of cool, awesome stuff. And we, like I said, we have some accidental crosses and stuff. And and then I don't even know, man. I got other stuff that people said they grew out. This is the first year was 2021. And then I bought seeds from them. Like, hey, we'll see what it does. But yeah, guys, thank you. Uh, thanks for turning in. Turning in. Turn, turn in on my lunch break. Thanks for tuning in on my lunch break. Look at this bottle. I got it all corrupted. I spilt it all. It looks pretty cool, though. <laughs> I'm going to tell all the. Company owner, you put some drops on your on your, your fake drops right there, man. That'd look pretty cool. Ari's Twisted Caribbean Sauce. Um, Panic Red's a good name. Yeah, it's just, I'm going to tell you why I thought of that name. Because I literally ate one and went into panic mode. And it was bad. It was bad. There's a couple of times where I have got to the point where I was scared. I do have a tachycardia, AFib. I have a heart condition. I'm not supposed to get my heart rate up um, really fast. Like, and it's happened from peppers a couple times. So I, I, I'll be honest, I do get scared. And this is probably why some of those challenges, most of them say, if you have a heart condition, don't eat this. Um, because I, I know what it could do to me. Um, but, you know, it's... I. With food, I'm good. I can eat some hot stuff. Like this here is a hot sauce. It's not hot, but I put tincture in it to make it hot. So it, it's got a nice burn to it. Now, this today, that I took two bites. There's one little bite missing there. I took that big bite first. That put me in my place. If I had ate that whole pepper, I don't know what the heck would have happened to me. I know that it was so painful. I was in such bad panic mode that I started, my head started hurting. Um, and, and I don't have a good pain tolerance, man. I've been kind of, you know, a sissy my whole life. I've never been to the hospital. <laughs> I mean, I've been to the hospital when I've had my heart, stuff, but I've never um, been admitted and spent the night. So I've never had serious injuries, you know, praise God for that. Um, but I'm not one of these people that has a oh, crazy pain tolerance. I can take, you know, I can eat a half a Reaper and uh, stuff like that. Um, I've ate some whole pods, of course. I don't always eat a half, um, but we review them. We want to tell people what the taste is like and what the burn is like, and we can usually tell from eating that much what what the pepper is about. Um, and sometimes I eat more than that. But this here, watch the video before this. Before I clocked into work today, I said, let me just review this pepper because I always give the the Trinidad Scorpion a bad rap. So I just personally don't like it. I know other people love it, you know. Um, but uh, it lit me up bad, 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 bad. bad. I mean, I literally like and I was having thoughts in my head like, okay, no more, no more fresh pods. I need no more fresh pods, you know, for the season, not for for life. But I literally was like, yo, uh, I, I, yeah. And the thing is that that's not like. I've been eating half pods. I cut them in half and pop it in my mouth. This is smells so good. This is the way I used to eat them. I would slice the side off and, and get it with a toothpick so I didn't get it on my hands and eat it. And if you go watch our older videos, you're gonna see that's what me and Mrs. Bolkai used to do. Of course, we still got lit up, but I get a little more brave now. But boy, sometimes I. Woo Anyways, um, hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you caught this live, if you didn't catch it live, you can go ahead and watch it. And, um, yeah, get with Ari's Twisted Sauce, Twisted Caribbean. Like I said, this is not hot. This is a sweet sauce. It's got a nice flavor. 
and it um, definitely made my lunch because a barbecue plate, man, it's, that, that stuff's pretty bland. Like, you need a good sauce for it. So hope everybody has a good weekend out there, and uh, God bless y'all.